Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our sequences and series series. So we're gonna be talking about geometric sequences. So let's go to dive into it. The common form of a geometric sequence is A times R to the power of N, where R is a common ratio and three sometimes is just the number that it's multiplied by each time. So let's go ahead and see an example of this real quick. I'm gonna move over here. We're gonna talk about the sequence. What if it's three, six, 12, 24, 48, and then so on and so forth. What we're doing, in order to find the common ratio of a geometric sequence, so spoiler, this is a geometric sequence, you can take any term and divide it by its previous term. So this is a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. And this is going to give us our common ratio. In this case, 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. You could literally do that for any of the pairs, right? And all of these are going to give us 2. And that's going to be our r. So here, so far, we have the form a times 2 to the power of n. And the, the way you can find a is just whatever the first term is going to be. So in this case, all of them start with 3, right? And so that's going to be 3 times 2 to the power of n. So that is going to be our geometric sequence in that case. So let's go over the definition. We have let r be a real number. Then the limit as n approaches infinity of r to the n. So here we have r to the n would be 2 to the power of n. If it equals 0, then the common ratio, the absolute value of it, is going to be less than 1. If the limit equals 1, then the common ratio has to be equal to 1. If it does not exist, then it's going to be less than or equal to negative 1, or it's going to be bigger than 1. So in our case, when we take the limit, so the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the power of n, this is going to go to infinity. So we say the limit does not exist, right? And that's because our r is going to be greater than 1, since it's equal to 2, right? Some other qualities or characteristics of this is that if r is greater than 0, then r sub n is going to be a monotonic sequence, which is super nice, right? If it's monotonic, that means it's non-decreasing or non-increasing, aka it's just moving in one direction, moving in one direction. Then we have if r is less than 0, if it's negative, it's going to oscillate. And that's because it's going to be negative, positive, negative, positive. It's going to oscillate between the numbers. So here we have a nice little visual to go along with it. So I showed the area where it's converged. And that's going to be when the ratio is between negative 1 or 1. And notice in this case, it can equal 1. And we'll talk about that later. Otherwise, in any other area, it's going to go ahead and diverge. So let's go ahead and go through some examples. We're going to graph the following sequences and describe their behavior. So first, we're going to notice that both of these, the R value, which is going to be equal to 0 0.75 in both cases, negative 0 0.75, it's going to be less than 1, which tells us both sequences will converge to zero, right? If we take the limit as n approaches infinity of either of them, so let's do 0 0.5 to the n, well, that's going to go to zero, which is also equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of negative 0 0.75 to the n. It doesn't matter for this second one that it's going to be oscillating because we're going to see a visual of it. So here we have our first sequence. If I zoom in right here, we can see all the little points. We can see that it is converging to zero. And then for our second sequence, we have that even though it's oscillating, so you can see it oscillating on either side here, it's still converging to zero, right? It's getting really, really close to zero. So let's go ahead and take a look at why this is the case. So for those two sequences, they both can be rewritten as a fraction. All numbers can be rewritten as a fraction. So let's pretend that we take any r and convert it to a fraction. So 3 fourths to the n and negative 3 fourths to the n. Let's take the limit as n approaches infinity of 3 fourths to the n. Well, the first thing that we can do is distribute that exponent. So that's going to be 3 to the n divided by 4 to the n. And think about it, which of these grows faster? The denominator grows faster. When the denominator is growing more quickly than the numerator, that means as the denominator gets bigger, the number gets really, really small, and it goes to zero. So for any case where r is less than 1, the denominator will always grow faster. And whenever the denominator gets bigger, it goes to zero. So that's the case whenever r is less than 1. Just try rewriting it as a fraction and see which one grows bigger. Now we're going to do the same thing, but now we're going to have 1.25 to the n and negative 1.25 to the n. So notice for this case, we have that r for both of them is going to be greater than 1. So the sequences will diverge. And that's just according to the theorem that we went over. But of course, we're going to talk about it later more of what that means. 
So here we have our first sequence. We can tell that we're getting larger and larger, right? And we're going to just diverge to infinity. That's just going to go to infinity. Now for our other sequence, it is going to be oscillating. So here you have it oscillating. But both of them on either side are getting really, really big. And they're both diverging to both positive infinity and negative infinity. So let's go and talk about how we can rework this one. Both of them, again, can be rewritten as fractions, just like any number can. So in this case, let's go ahead and take the limit as n approaches infinity. We're going to just do 5 fourths to the power of n. And here we're going to take the limit and we can rewrite that as 5 to the power of n divided by 4 to the power of n. And so which of those grows faster? The numerator. Since the numerator grows faster, that means the limit is going to go to infinity. Now if we were going to do that for the negative one, we could rewrite that as a limit as n approaches infinity of negative 1 to the n times 5 to the n over 4 to the n. So again, the numerator grows faster, but that negative 1 is going to make it go to both infinity and negative infinity. So either way, they're both diverging. So when the common ratio is greater than 1 or the common ratio is less than negative 1, the numerator will always grow faster than the denominator, which means it diverges. So here we talked about when the common ratio was a number between 0 and 1 in magnitude, right, positive or negative. We talked about when it's greater than 1, both positive and negative. What happens when it equals 1 and when it equals negative 1? So first, let's take the sequence. We're going to do 1 to the power of n. If we wrote that out, that's just going to be 1, 1, 1 just forever. And we'll just go ahead and call this a sub n. So when we take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, well, that's just going to equal 1, which is why we say that a sub n then converges to 1. So that's why it's totally fine when it's equal to 1, but it's not totally fine when it's equal to negative 1, because what's happening here is that it's oscillating between positive and negative 1, which means there's no value for b sub n, which I just named it that, to converge to because it's going to go to both negative and positive 1. So b sub n diverges, right, because it's, because it's positive 1 and negative 1. So that's why it's not OK when it equals negative 1. But that's all I have for us today on geometric sequences. If you enjoyed this video, I have many more like it. So make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.